All right, guys, so this is the thoracodorsal nerve and we're gonna talk about these nerves when we take the brachial plexus and how do they form and from where we're getting them. But remember that I told you previously, remember the subscapular artery and I told you it gives you thoracodorsal and circumflex scapular and I told you that the thoracodorsal artery reaches the latissimus dorsi because it's a dorsal muscle at the thoracic region. So we call it thoracodorsal. Also the nerve, we call it thoracodorsal nerve that is trying to reach the latissimus dorsi muscle. Okay, now the deltoid, we already talked about the deltoid a lot. Uh, we talked about how it comes out from the spine, from the acromion, from the lateral third of the uh, clavicle or lateral half of the clavicle and how it is attached to the deltoid tuberosity and it comes on top of the shoulder. All right, so the, um, um, what does the deltoid do? It, ca it causes shoulder abduction. It brings the shoulder to abduction, but after the 15 degrees, because the initiation of abduction is by supraspinatus muscle, from the supraspinatus muscle that comes from the supraspinous fossa, the, fir the very first degree is by the deltoid. It can also cause medial and lateral rotation because it has different... Um, uh, fibers. It has posterior fibers. It has anterior. It can also cause anti um, flexion and extension. All right. So this muscle, it has three fibers. That's why it can uh, do many function. But the main function is abduction. The nerve supply is the axillary nerve. All right. So the nerve supply, the deltoid, has an innervation by axillary nerve. All right. If you look at the deltoid, you can find that it comes out from the lateral third of the clavicle, from the outer border of acromion process, and from the spine of the scapula. And to the opposite side, we were having, remember, the insertion of the trapezius muscle. It was coming all the way here to all those guys, but from internal side. Okay? And this is how it looks from the posterior aspect. Um, this is the spine of the scapula. And this is the acromion process, and this is the clavicle. Anterior fibers, middle fibers, posterior fibers of deltoid. And remember again that I told you about the, uh, the insertion of the trapezius muscle was going all the way to the same people from the other side. So all these bones from the other side were the insertion of trapezius muscle. That was the trapezius muscle. So it's coming all the way here in the thoracic region here, posterior, thoracic, I mean, uh, th spinous process of thoracic uh, spine, spinous processes of thoracic vertebrae, all right? Now, in the scapular region, we have dorsally three important muscles. From the medial side, now we are talking about the scapular region. In the scapula, you have three muscles here medially. You have two muscles here, one above the spine, one below the spine, and two muscles lateral border. The muscles here, the levator scapulae, one that gets attached to the superior angle of the scapula, the levator scapulae, and the rhomboid minor and rhomboid major. So from where the rhomboid, the levator scapulae will come out? It will come out of the transverse processes of C1 to C4. So this one, the levator scapulae from transverse processes. The other ones come out of the spinous processes, not transverse. Only the levator scapulae comes out from the transverse processes of C1 to C4. And it gets attached to the superior angle above the spine. That's why it's called levator scapulae because it can elevate. It's not only elevating, it can also rotate because if you're trying to pull something something from its angle, you will definitely rotate it, okay? So it causes shoulder um, scapular rotation and elevation. You also have rhomboid minor and major. And you guys know that rhomboid minor and major are opposing the serratus anterior. So they, call, they cause a scapular retraction. Minor comes out of C7 and major comes out from T1 to T4. Spinous processes. So this is the origin. The insertion, all of them are inserted into the medial border of the scapula. The levator scapulae above the, the root of the spine. The rhomboid minor at the root of the spine. And the rhomboid major below the, the spine. Below. At the medial border. These two, they do scapular retraction and this one elevation and rotation. 
What is the innervation? You have a nerve that goes to the scapular region dorsally. So what do you want to call that nerve? Dorsal scapular nerve. So the nerve that supplies levator scapular, rhomboid minor, and major is called dorsal scapular nerve. All right, guys? Now the next muscles are the muscles that are on the posterior side of the uh, scapula, above the spine and below the spine. Above the spine, in the supraspinous fossa, we call it supraspinatus. Below the spine, in the infraspinous fossa, we call it infraspinatus. These muscles are supplied by the nerve that was coming on top of the scapula. Do you guys remember that nerve that was running in the suprascapular foramen? It's the suprascapular nerve. So the nerve that supplies supraspinatus and infraspinatus is called suprascapular nerve. And then the teres minor, I will mention it here, because three of them, they are attached to the greater tuberosity of the humerus. And because they are attached to the greater tuberosity, and they are coming from the back, what they will do is they will do lateral rotation of the shoulder. Okay, so they will do lateral rotation or external rotation of the shoulder or of the humerus. All right? Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. But teres minor is not, at the, it's, it's not coming out from these fossae. It comes out from the lateral border of the scapula. All right? And I'm going to tell you about the innervation later on. Teres major and minor, and I will tell you about them later on. All right? But supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, the set muscles, SIT muscles, they are attached to the greater tuberosity and they are external rotators of the shoulder joint, supra and infraspinatus, they are supplied by suprascapular nerve because the suprascapular nerve was already coming from here. Remember? Now we have teres major and minor. This is showing you the teres uh, major muscle and now it's alone here. Teres major, it comes from the lower part of the lateral border and it's attached to the medial lip of bicipital groove the teres major muscle is medial rotator, okay? So it goes to the medial lip of bicipital groove. And the teres major, I will tell you about the innervation later on. All right, so just remember for now that we had here teres minor and down teres major. Teres minor was going with supra and infraspinatus to the greater tuberosity, but teres major, it goes to the medial lip of bicipital groove and I will tell you also how to remember the insertion as we proceed. Now, how can we remember the insertion of the teres major, pectoralis major, and latissimus dorsi? Remember, guys, when I talked about them, I told you I will tell you how to remember them as we proceed. So this is how we remember it. It's the bride between two majors. The bride here is the latissimus dorsi muscle. Latissimus dorsi tendon is attached to the floor of bicipital groove. Do you guys remember the bicipital groove? It's the place that you have, where you have the running of the, the biceps tendon, the long tendon, uh, the tendon of long head of biceps, this groove. Remember when I told you the greater tuberosity as you, uh, as you go with it, you will find the lateral lip and the, the lesser tuberosity as you go with it, you will find the medial lip. So the lateral lip, what is attached here, one major and medial lip, one major. And in the floor, the bride. The bride is the, the, the latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi muscle that was causing you the second phase of freestyle of swimming in the dorsal aspect of your body. It is attached to the floor of bicipital groove. And to the lateral lip, you have pectoralis major muscle. The lateral lip, pectoralis major. Medial lip, uh, teres major muscle. Okay, so now you can know and remember the insertion of pectoralis major, teres major, and latissimus dorsi muscle. Now we have the muscle that causes, in, this is the chief internal rotator of the shoulder. Uh, uh, if I told you that the SIT muscles are attached to the greater tuberosity and they do external rotation, then the internal rotator is gonna be attached to what? The lesser tuberosity, all right? So if that is my uh, humerus, I have greater tuberosity. It's at, uh, what's attached here is the set muscles, 
supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, they are doing external rotation. So the lesser tuberosity, and it's lesser because it's attached to only one muscle, which is the subscapularis. So this will do internal rotation. So this will do external rotation. That will do internal or media rotation. And why is it lesser? Because only one muscle attached to it, the subscapularis. And from where the subscapularis is originating? From the subscapular fossa. It's the ventral surface of your scapula, guys. What is the innervation? It has innervation from two nerves, upper and lower. What do we call them? Subscapular nerves. Upper and lower subscapular nerves. Okay? Internal rotator. And we call them rotator cuff. Now, what about the teres minor and teres major? Teres minor, you guys, and teres major, they don't have separate innervation. Teres minor and teres major, they are biggers. They were biggers with an E. Um, they will try to take innervation from the surroundings. Now, think about it. Can you guys see your teres minor? It's very near to which muscle? Deltoid. So, from where it will donate uh, sorry, from where it will, who will donate uh, innervation to the teres minor? It's the innervation, the nerve that supplies the deltoid, which is axillary nerve. Axillary nerve is going to innervate also the teres minor. What about the teres major? If you guys look at the teres major here, it's very near to the lower part of the subscapularis. This is your subscapularis muscle. So if the subscapularis uh, is having innervation from upper and lower subscapular nerve, who will supply the teres major muscle? So who will donate innervation to the teres major here? It's going to be the lower subscapular nerve. All right. So the teres major t takes innervation from the subscapular nerve lower. So does it make sense for you guys from where they will try to uh, borrow innervation? All right. Um, all right. So uh, let's just uh, see the rotator cuff and we can recap everything um, now. If you guys look at the humerus, you have a greater tuberosity and you have lesser tuberosity. From the greater, you have insertion of the sit muscles, SIT, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor. They are all external rotators or lateral rotators. They are attached to the greater tuberosity. And the subscapularis, it's attached to the lesser tuberosity. Here is the subscapularis attached to the lesser tuberosity. And remember that I told you the tendon of supraspinatus runs below the coracoacromial arch. It's very important you remember this information because in uh, supraspinatus tendonitis, um, you will have um, um, a pain if you try to, uh, for that patient, if you try to ask him to abduct his shoulder. And the reason for that pain is because of the short distance because, because of the coracoacromial arch. It's going to impinge. We call it impingement syndrome. So with the, with the shoulder abduction, if you have an inflammation of the supraspinatus tendon, it's going to be uh, affected as you go up um, in shoulder abduction. All right. Um, so this is how the muscles are rotating around your uh, humerus, the rotator cuff muscles, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, external rotators, subscapularis internal rotator so all of them are rotators so these are the rotator cuff all right now let's revise what we've just said we said we said that you guys we have pectoralis major muscle it has clavicular and sternal heads and it goes all the way to to um, to get attached to the lateral lip of bicipital groove that was that was one of the two majors remember the bride between two majors so this is pectoralis major and this is pectoralis minor from the th three, four, and five ribs, and it's attached to the um, coracoid process, and it stabilizes the scapula. Pectoralis major was doing the first phase of freestyle of swimming, and this is the deltoid muscle. Pectoralis major is supplied by medial and lateral pectoral nerves, and the pectoralis minor is supplied by only medial pectoral nerve, and some sources will say it also uh, takes from the lateral. And this is the deltoid that covers the uh, shoulder, deltoid and we talked about the origin of it uh, if you look from the back guys this is your scapula here um, this is the spine of the scapula and this is the superior angle and this is the root of the scapula and this is the medial 
border and this is the inferior border of the scapula. If you have a muscle that is at the superior angle, levator scapula, it elevates and it rotates. If you have a muscle against the root of the spine, this is rhomboid minor. If you have a muscle all the way down from the medial border, it's rhomboid major. They cause scapular retraction and the innervation to the dorsal aspect of the scapula by dorsal scapular nerve. And now if you move to the spine of the scapula here, the back of the scapula, you will have a muscle above and muscle below. The muscle above is the supraspinatus and below infraspinatus. They are supplied by the suprascapular nerve because remember the suprascapular nerve runs in the suprascapular foramen on that was on the superior border of the scapula. And now you have the teres minor and major. Teres minor will donate from axillary which supplies the deltoid. Teres major will do, donate from the lower subscapular nerve down because it's very near to the uh, subscapular subscapularis muscle. And uh, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor are external rotators and they are attached to the greater tuberosity. And uh, teres major is the other major of the bride between two majors. So it's, an, it's um, an, uh, attached to the medial border of bicipital groove. And the bicipital groove, uh, the floor uh, gives attachment to the uh, insertion tendon of the latissimus dorsi muscle. So this is the bride actually. And uh, the innervation of the latissimus dorsi is going to be the long thoracic, uh, sorry, the thoracodorsal nerve. The long thoracic nerve innervates the serratus anterior. All right, guys. So uh, with that, we are done with the three regions. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.